Hi, Marty here, VK4 Kilo Charlie of Mad Dog Coils. And today I'm letting you know about a new product called the Robo Dog. Uh, so let me explain this product for you. I use a service called Remote TX. It's a great service and it's um, at remotetx.net is the website. It allows me to connect to my radio at a remote station. So I've got a 7300 at a remote location and uh, a Raspberry Pi is connected to the 7300 via a USB port. And then there's this um, software that runs off an SD card on the Raspberry Pi that is provided to me by the author of the Remote TX software. And um, uh, it works extremely well, extremely well. It allows me from any web browser to be able to access my 7300 through that Raspberry Pi. And uh, you don't need to do any port forwarding or any kind of fancy stuff like that. It just works and it's brilliant. There is a cost involved in that service, but it's well worth it. So for anybody that uh, is thinking about setting up a remote station, you could go to remotetx.net, see what radios that are supported and uh, consider that as a service that you might want to use. Well, um, the remote, the ICOM 7300 at my remote station only has one antenna port. Um, and I wanted the ability to be able to switch in multiple antennas to my 7300. So my new product, the Robo Dog, is what that is all about. So I'm just going to show you uh, now some um, uh, some video of that product and uh, explain how it all works. Okay, so you can see here that I have a Raspberry Pi and that's running the software, the image on the SD card that's provided uh, by Remote TX. And um, <clears throat> next to that is the board that I've designed um, and built called the Robo Dog. So this has one in and three out. Basically, the middle one there goes to the 7300 and then the three outer connectors uh, for antenna one, antenna two, and antenna three. And so this little ribbon cable here is the control cable that goes to the, the uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO output pins and um, when, when you look at the web page, when you operate your radio, there's three little plug buttons that um, you can turn on and off through the website, which actually then control those GPIO pins. And the GPIO pins activate relays that are under here. I'll get, get you a better look of this in a minute. Relays that are under there that um, switch in and out these antennas so that's what it's all about now what i'm going to do now is put all this in a box that i've created and i'll show you the finished product so here we have it ready to go in in the enclosure so i've built the enclosure large enough so that the raspberry pi board uh, does have a mounting spot there's four little screw holes there and screws this little little tap screws that hold the Raspberry Pi in place. Don't have to use uh, this enclosure for the Pi. You can funnel the, um, the control ribbon cable through some vents and have the Raspberry Pi outside. Uh, but I have built it so that there's plenty of space there and plenty of breathing, air, air movement uh, space to be able to handle both the Pi and the Robo Dog. Here's the other side of the Robo Dog. You can see here the control circuitry part of it with MOSFETs and optocouplers. And then you've got the RF side with switching relays that switch in and out. Um, so the optocouplers isolate the control side circuitry from the RF power side. These are 12 volt relays, so we do need to bring in um, anything up to about 14 volts, 12 to 14 volts by those power poles. That can be straight off 
your um, power supply for your radio. Uh, and of course, the Raspberry Pi needs to be powered. Normally, most Raspberry Pis have a little um, 240 volt little plug pack that takes it down to five volts. And so that will still come in through the side here to the power socket. And then you've got your ethernet and uh, USB connections there. So I'm just gonna put the lid on now and then I'll show you what it all looks like when it's um, sealed up. Okay, the lid's on. We have um, three indicator LEDs that light up, one, two, and three, that lets you know when antenna one, two, or three socket is active. And then of course, that's the, um, the connection to the transceiver. And then we've got some vent holes. There's your um, 12 to 14 volt power up there on the top right. Um, you've got all your connections through to the Raspberry Pi, your LAN and your USBs. And then on this side, you've got access to put your power in um, and then a screen um, that, uh, not that you would want to need to connect up a screen because it's pretty much plug and play. So um, there you have it, some more ventilation on the rear and then that's the front MDC for Mad Dog Coils. So that's the product. Let's uh, connect it up. So there it is. I've only got two antennas plugged into it at the moment. And all the connections over here for the Raspberry Pi and power at the back. And of course our 13.8 volts coming off the power supply. Just showing you in here. This is my uh, power supply and the ICOM radio. So I will fire it up and we'll get it working. So I'm now gonna show you the Remote TX software on my iPhone. I've just done a screen recording to sort of grab it. Unfortunately, with the screen recording, it doesn't bring in the audio that you, that I'm, that you would normally hear the signal uh, coming in um, on that receiving station. However, um, so that's why I'm doing this voiceover. So let's just go through it. Here you can see how uh, um, that's the uh, the screen there. I've connected to the 7100, 7300, sorry. Um, and uh, click on radio. I'm turning turning this the radio on there. Uh, then the controls will appear. Uh, you can then um, select bands. You can change your frequency up and down. Uh, then I will go back up the top here and select the setup button and this is on the top right there You can see plug one plug two plug three These are the direct buttons that control the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi So I just pressed plug one there, which is bringing in my uh, NFED half wave for the classic bands uh, Here I've turned plug one off plug two is the the uh, antenna for the WARC band 17, 30, 17 and 12 and you can see I've just changed frequency there to the 30 meter band and you can see I'm receiving a signal there, quite a strong signal. Uh, so that's how it's done through the software is in the setup screen there it's got the plug one, plug two, plug three which you can then turn those uh, relays on and off and you see I've just pressed plug three there and turned plug three off. So as you can see here my remote station is at an elevated position high up looking over to the ocean in the distance there on the Sunshine Coast. That's Mount Coulomb in the distance there. If I come back here, you can see my uh, two NFED half wave antennas. So that one there is the, the matching transformer for um, the WARC bands. So that one's uh, 30, 17 and 12 meters. And this one here, uh, is the classic bands 40, 20, 15, and 10, and they're all strung up through that uh, Poinciana tree up there. So, there you have it the Robo Dog. It's available now for purchase. Uh, check out maddogcoils.com.au for pricing. There's also a, be a PDF instruction sheet there that you can download first if you want to read up um, a little bit more about it. 
and uh, yeah it uh, works extremely well with the remote TX software you don't have to use remote TX with it if you have another way to trigger GPIO port pins on a Raspberry Pi um, through node red for example uh, yeah you can do it that way as well and do, do some remote antenna switching but uh, yeah I put for me I, I brought I, I built it for myself first and I've had it on test now for for quite a few weeks and it's working great but I can see other applications there that um, people may want to use it for so uh, check it out this is Marty, VK4 Kilo Charlie. Thanks for watching.